What's going on guys, Medicine in 3 Minutes back here with another video and today we're going to be talking about Friedrich Ataxia. Now we're going to keep the subject clear, brief and illustrated and as usual make sure to hit the like, subscribe if you're new and let's get started. Now just taking a look at the overall genetic aspect of it, uh, Friedrich Ataxia is a genetic autosomal recessive disease by mutation in the FXN gene GAA triplet which actually repeats itself in the Frataxin protein genome of chromosome 9. Now when we're talking about inheritance, we're going to find that when the dad is a carrier with no condition and the mom is a carrier with no condition, you're going to have a 25% chance that the child is uh, not a carrier and does not have any conditions. You're going to find a 50% chance that the children uh, are just like the parents, um, you know, are a carrier but do not have the condition. And there's a 25% chance where the child has the condition, which is going to be Friedrich ataxia. The disease does affect one in every 50,000 people. Uh, that is in the United States, and it does have a higher rate in Western European descent. So genetically speaking, if you're born with um, a Western European descent, you're going to have a higher chance of uh, getting Friedrich ataxia. Now, um, ataxia is a cause by the degeneration of the spinal cord, um, connection with the cerebellum of sensory neurons directing muscle movements of arms and legs are also affected uh, by Friedrich ataxia. And in the spinal cord, you're going to find that nerve cells lose myelin sheath. Now, when looking at Friedrich ataxia, you are going to find that 91% of cases have patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and that can essentially shorten their life expectancy. Now, that is the most common cause of death when it comes to ataxia, and what is essentially happening is there's a narrowing in the space between uh, the atrium and the septum, and that's preventing blood from actually getting out of the ventricle. Now, the combination of this uh, with the muscle hypertrophy is actually going to lead to complications. Now, when we're looking at symptoms, we are going to find sensory ataxia. Um, that's a staggering gait, which is essentially an instability compensated by a wider base of support. So since the person is not as stable as they were before it, they're going to have to start walking with a wider stance and uh, kind of like stomping around left foot, right foot type of thing. Um, the second thing that we're going to find is dysmetria. Now, this is an inaccuracy in range of movement. So what this means is that if you were to take a completely healthy patient and you were to tell him, hey, go grab me this ball, they would go in a straight line and simply just go get the ball. But a person with dysmetria is actually going to have very much uh, a lot of difficulty going to grab the ball. So they're going to take a much uh, more difficult trajectory just to go and get the ball. Now, uh, when we're looking at ataxia, you are going to find a chunkal ataxia, which is going to be difficulty with balance while walking. And as you can see here in the image, um, the knees are going to walk in that specific sense. And when it comes to sensory ataxia, you're going to find more that we were talking about that wide stance and the stomping just left to right because they're trying to make up for um, that instability that they're having in their balance. Now, more symptoms that we are going to find is going to be uh, cerebellar nystagmus. So that's going to be a fast cicadic eye movement. So the eyes are going to be uh, very much twitching uh, from side to side. So here, as you can see in the image, the eyes are going to be twitching on the left side and they're going to be twitching on the right side. Uh, another thing you're going to find is bilateral Babinski. So that means um, if you were to trigger all the nerves in the bottom part of the foot in an upward motion you'd find the toes would spring would spring up like you can see here just in the image so that's going to be bilateral babinski now we are going to find an absence in the deep tendon reflexes as you can see and there's going to be an explosive dystartic speech that just means the person is uh, speaking in a very uh, impulsive and loud manner or you know an explosive manner as you can see in the name now as disease is going to progress um, you're going to find that patients are going to lose their eyesight and their hearing. Um, the complications that you will find are going to be scoliosis, diabetes mellitus, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, as we spoke before. And that's going to be, again, the most common cause of death when we're dealing with ataxia. So that about sums up Friedrich ataxia. Now, this was a simple and brief overview. So we just want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on post notifications. Um, I know we have been slacking with the videos. We've actually been working on a program of hundreds of videos. We're going to be dropping packages uh, for any students, for anybody looking to learn. Uh, we're going to be dropping our own website. So just make sure to stay tuned. We've been working hard on those videos. And now we're, we're finally back. Ready to uh, continue pushing everything on YouTube. So just uh, make sure to stay tuned. And... Uh, Leave your feedback down below. Let us know if we did anything wrong, anything we can uh, fix, anything that we can improve on. Let us know. We'd love to hear you guys' feedback. And thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.